Okay, welcome to our uh, screencast on the standardized normal variable, Z, known as Z scores. Okay, we're going to learn all about this um, about this today, and the reason we're learning about it is because we need we need the standardized normal variable um, when we don't know what the mean and or the standard deviation are. Okay, so we need. Um, Okay, so um, when we want to find the, the, the mean and or the standard deviation, then we need to access what we know, what's called the standardized normal variable. Let's, let's, let's leave it at that for the moment because you don't know what it is at this stage. So we need to pose a problem in order to tease this and tease this, uh, tease this kind of idea, this object, tease it out a bit. Okay, so um, initially what we're going to do then is we're going to consider... We're going to consider the the random variable x uh, that's considered uh, that that's distributed normally, uh, such that the mean is mu, and the variance is four. So therefore, standard deviation is two. Okay, so that's all nice. Um, and from that, find right. So find the value. Find the value of mu so the mean of this of this distribution all right given that the probability uh, that x is less than or equal to 2 is equal to 0 0.556 0 0.556 okay so that all looks um, fair enough however once we have a little look at uh, this bell curve and start to consider what it is that we're being asked to do then right, we will soon discover that this is a little bit different right we've got mu at the first point of inflection to the right of mu we have mu plus one standard deviation and mu minus one standard deviation down here. Okay, what else can we can we do on this diagram? We know that the probability that x is less than or equal to two. That gives us a little hint. Is 0.556. Now 0.556 is more than half. Remember this this is value of two must be slightly to the right of mu. So let's just place place it here somewhere. All right, let's call that value there two, and let's shade. Let's shade the area here to the left of 2. And if we consider this area here, then this is the 0 0.556 that is being mentioned in the question. The area equals 0 0.556. Okay. So what is mu? Well, um, look what we've been what we've done so far what's in our armory with 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 bell curves well just quickly if I um, if I tell you what the mean is I don't know three and a standard deviation maybe it's one so we go one this side and one that side and I say to you okay what is the uh, probability that um, um, X lies between um, 3.5 and uh, 4.5 uh, so that would be that area there okay that's fine I can use um, I can use my calculator 3.5 to 4.5 um, not sure what I'm doing there that's not my calculator there it is so uh, well, what do we do menu uh, 5 5 uh, 2 and I go from I don't know what I say, 3.5 to 4.5 with my um, mean of 3 and my standard deviation of 1 for memory. Um, and so I'd get 0.24173, which would be 0.24173. If I said that, so that would be, that would give me my area there, 0 0.24173, I think it's what it was. So the probability that the random variable um, lies between those two values would be about 24%. Okay, so that, that sort of thing we're okay with. What else do we know? We know that if we're given an area, let's say 40% uh, of, find the number here at which 
uh, below which 40% of scores lie. So we might go, oh, okay, well, that's that's in here somewhere. Uh, so that might that's 0 0.4 there. That's my area, but I don't know this boundary value. But I do know that um, I've got a facility here on my calculator to help me with that. Uh, menu 5, 5, 3, the inverse normal, because I can put in 0.4 here as an area, and if I give it 3 and 1, it'll tell me the boundary value, 2.75, 2.75. So I can say that that is 2.75 in there, given that information. So that's what we've done so far. That's pretty much all we've got, those sort of questions. This is different, isn't it? This is saying, here's, yeah, 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 there's your area, and there's your boundary, but I don't, I don't know what your mean is. So how do we proceed? Okay, well, if we have a look at, um, we could put that area in and just make up a mean and standard deviation. How about we do that? So let's go and just give that a go. So I'm going to make up another distribution here, another bell curve. Um, I'm just going to make up a mean. All right, I'm going to make it to be 10, say. And I'm going to go over here so that my standard deviation is 3. So I go from 13 down to 7 here. All right. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to find out with, for, point, for an area of 0.556 where that would leave me. Now I know it's going to be here somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to go for 0 0.556 in here. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I know that through inverse normal, putting this area in 10 and 3, I will, I'm pretty confident I can, I can arrive at that value there. So let's go and find that out and see if that helps us any. So we're back to menu, uh, 553. My area was 0.556. My mean, I think I said, was 10, standard deviation was 3, and 10.4225, okay, so how does that help me find my mean here? Well, surely this, if these areas are the same, and they're both bell curves, so they've got that symmetry, um, surely this value here, let's just do a little, let's just do a little thinking logically here. Surely this value, so 10.4225 uh, minus um, 10. So this, this, this area, this, this distance here. Okay. Now if I divide that by my standard deviation, that should equal, let's see if you agree with my logic. That should equal 2 minus mu, 2 minus mu over this standard deviation of 2. Given what you know about these uh, these objects here, these these standard um, devi uh, these these sorry normal um, <laughs> normal distributions, these bell curves, um, with the same area, we should these these ratios should work, right? I should be able to say that this this number here minus this number divided by my standard deviation should be the same. It's the same area. It's like it's a it's a it's a, it's it's a similar. It's they've got to be in proportion. So two minus mu over my standard deviation there. So this should get me my my mu. So I've only got one unknown here. It's mu. So let's just do a little work and see if we can get this out. So I carried my algebra through and I reached this value here of mu equal one, equaling 1.72. 1 Does that look about right? 1.72 here? Can that be right? So what I'm saying is that, that uh, this score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation should be equal to this score minus that mean divided by the standard deviation. If you like... Uh, what we're doing is we're taking this area here, right, this this area here, and um, or even not that area, maybe that length there. Um, no, that area. Taking that area there, two minus mu. No, it's that length, isn't it? It's that length, and we're dividing by this length here, 
and we're saying that that's got to be in the same ratio as this length divided by this length. So what we're essentially saying is that, um, that the distance here, that this score is above the mean, given that these areas are the same, the distance that this score is above the mean, try something else, this distance here, as a fraction of its um, uh, standard deviation, as a fraction of this distance here, has to be the same as this distance as a fraction of its standard deviation, given that the bell curve is, um, all bell curves have a, uh, an area beneath them of one, and all bell curves have a, an area from the mean to the standard deviation, an area of roughly 34.34. Um, so what this is suggesting is that we are um, we are taking what we know from all bell curves and applying it to an unknown. So what I did there was I took a random uh, took a random value. I took a random mean and standard deviation. Now I could have taken any number here. I could have taken fifty five thousand with a standard deviation of twenty six point five. The point is. That would have given me a value here when I found this area, when I asked um, for this boundary value. And the point is that this, this distance here divided by my standard deviation would be the same as this one here. So what I'm finding is I'm finding the fraction above the mean, the percentage above the mean that my, uh, in this case, above the mean that my um, my value lies so um, I'm getting here that my value um, of uh, the 10.4225 minus 10 divided by 3 that that fraction there tells me how much above the mean how many standard deviations above the mean I am and uh, so if I if I can work out what it is there then I can find out how many standard deviations, sorry, I can make sure I'm exactly the same standard deviations above the mean here when I don't know the mean. Okay, so that brings us to what a standardized, um, a standardized normal is, this Z, the standardized normal variable Z. So rather than take a random uh, uh, mean and standard deviation, uh, the, the standardized normal Z takes a very specific uh, value for the mean and standard deviation, and that is that Z is distributed normally with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now really the only reason for doing this is to simplify calculations. We can take a different standard deviation every single time, but what we like to do in mathematics is make life easy for ourselves, and certainly by doing uh, by standardizing to these parameters, we do that. Uh, so what we essentially do in this case is we go, okay, well let's say that rather than going to any old value, let's take a mean at zero, a standard deviation at one, and that is why when you open your calculator up to the inverse normal, these are the default values. So if we know, let's go back to this question, 0.556, so back to our 0.556, where were we? About here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to find this value here, which is known as the Z score um, in a standardized normal distribution. So this area here is 0 0.556. Let's find out what our Z score is by going into a calculator, um, hitting menu, menu 5. Five, three. Our area is 0.556. We're leaving, do you see now, mean and standard deviation, default values. So um, we hit OK, we get 0 0.140835. 0 0.140835. 0 0.143... Forgotten it. 0 0.140835. 0 0.140835. Three, five. 
so what that number there also the point of a standardized uh, uh, format is that this tells me a little bit of information this tells me I'm 0.14 standard deviations above the mean it's positive so I'm um, 0.14 uh, 0.14 says I'm above the mean minus 0.14 would say I'm 0.14 standard deviations below the mean so here I am um, so that is my Z score that's what we're calling our Z score Z score and we're going to use that Z score to help us find the mean up here okay so what we'll do is we'll say okay well this point um, 140835 we're going to go through the same calculations but you'll see it's very uh, much simpler because I'm going to go 0 0.140835 I'm going to say that minus my mean here of 0 over my standard deviation of 1 okay that's equal to um, what did I have 2 minus my unknown of mu over 2 okay so this is all nice because I've just got uh, 0 0.140835 and that's equal to uh, 2 minus mu over 2 so I now uh, multiply through by 2 and solving for mu from there a couple more steps but we're going to get back to 1.72 to three significant figures and so same result and um, but just done more simply um, and um, it just enables us to bring in another language as well a Z score is a uh, is a helpful score. So if I tell you your Z score is 2, that says you're 2 standard deviations above the mean. If I tell you your Z score is minus 1.5, you're 1 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. And because we have a good understanding of what a bell curve and those values mean, percentage-wise, what percentage of the population sits um, uh, 1 standard deviation away, 2 standard deviations away from the mean, so it's it's a it's a useful it's a it's a useful me, uh, useful measure. Okay, so the Z score Z is calculated um, like so. It takes the uh, the mean from our uh, whatever our, uh, our our normal distribution is. Um, takes sorry, that's not the mean. Takes it takes the score in our normal distribution uh, just our random uh, random one we subtract the the mean and divide by the standard deviation and that gives us the z score so um, for instance uh, so for instance let's just do an example all right find the z score the z score for uh, uh, so say 25 when um, so for 25 for 25 uh, for I'll say x equals 25 when x is distributed normally let's say um, mean of 15 and standard deviation of 5 so the z score for 25 what we're after is how many standard deviations above the mean is uh, is it? And we can see on 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 uh, on site that the standard uh, mean of fifteen, standard deviation of five. This is ten above the mean. That's two standard deviations. So I expect the Z score here will be two. Let's put it through the formula though, and just check that out. So this uh, this formula here, Z equals x minus mu over sigma. Okay, so our Z score comes from taking our X score, which in this case is 25, subtracting the mean, which is 15, so 10, over standard deviation, which is 5. So we're taking 10 over 5 and we're getting 2. So in this distribution, which is 15 here, uh, 20 there, uh, 10 there so the score of 25 at 25 that has a Z score of 2 what that means is if we if we took every score on this distribution and we standardized it to a normal distribution where 0 is the mean and 1 is our standard deviation then that that score of 25 now becomes 
this score here of 2. So their corresponding scores once this standardization has taken place. So this, this is, if you like, an algebraic transformation of a normal distribution to the standardized normal distribution. So that is the algebraic that's the algebraic transformation, right? From let's say from um, from uh, x uh, being normally distributed to um, x being distributed um, in a standardized way. So there, there we have the standardized normal variable. The standardized normal variable, Z. Okay, so now how are we going to use it? We've got the idea of it. It's, it's now going to help us find the mean and standard deviation when we don't know them, and we have some other information. So we might, we'll be, we'll be given the area, and we'll be able to um, take that area, find Z scores that match those boundary values and uh, work out our unknowns from there. So let's look at an example. Um, okay, let's have a look at this example. In fact, it's question one from exercise 10p. So, all right, x is distributed normally. We don't know the mean. Our standard deviation is three. Find the value of mu given that the probability that x is less than or equal to five is equal to 0.754. If you feel like you want to have a crack at this, um, then it's probably a good idea to pause the video now have a go at it, and then come back and, and see if um, see if you're right, see if we match. Um, if you feel like another example is going to be helpful, then, um, then just watch on. But try and anticipate what's going to happen next, perhaps. Okay, I always like to draw a diagram um, and put down on that the information we have and the information we want. We are looking for that. Uh, we are going three left and three right. Our probability that x is less than or equal to five is 0.754. Now it helps to understand what our cumulative um, probabilities are. So up to the mean, it's 50%, 0.5. Up to one standard deviation to the right, it's going to be, so up to here, we're up to 50%. Now we know that this covers six, about 68, so I've got 34% in here. So I'm about 84% at one standard deviation. I'm up at about 84% area. So 0.754 is coming in less than that. So I'm in here somewhere. I'd just like to know roughly where I am. That's five. Okay, that's five. Now remember, this is just a normal distribution of whatever data. Uh, it's not certainly not standardized. Okay, so my area less than 5, so this area here, that's equal to 0 0.754, 0 0.754. Okay, I want to know what mu is. Okay, so I'm going to use what, I'm going to use that, how far above the, stand, above the mean am I here? What does 5 represent as a proportion of the, of the standard deviation above the mean. What fraction is it above the mean? Well, I can use my standardized um, my standardized normal distribution to help me with this. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to rewrite with 0 and 1 as my mean and standard deviation and I'm going to work out where at 0.754 okay, so I'm exactly the same spot 0.754, that area there, 0.754, if that's my area and it's a standardized uh, version, then what is that value there? I can find this out because through my inverse normal, I've got my area, I've got my standard deviation, and I've got my mean. So I can use that now to find out what my boundary value here is that corresponds to my 5 in this distribution. So I go in and I find it out. So I'm into menu 553. My area, which I've forgotten, um, was 
0.754, mean and standard deviation as they are, and I get 0 0.687131. 0 0.687. 0 0.687131. What does that mean? It means I'm 0.69 standard deviations above the mean. And that's what my 5 represents. So how do I use this now to find out my uh, mu? Well, 5 minus my mu over my standard deviation, which was 3, that's going to have to equal this value here, 0 0.687131. Because remember, that value is my fraction above the mean, my uh, uh, proportion of my, or my fraction, sorry, my fraction of my standard deviation above the mean. So 5 minus mu divided by 3 is the same fraction above the mean up here, and these areas are the same. So this, solving this, will get me uh, the value of my mean. And so mu is equal to 2.94. Um, does, that, does that look about right? 2.94 here. Yeah, that looks pretty solid, doesn't it, with a, with a, a standard deviation of 3 here? Yep. That looks about right. So that value, uh, the difference between five and two point nine four, within the uh, within the frame of a standard deviation of three, um, is equivalent to our z score of 0 0.687131. So that's how we use our z scores. Going to do one more example. Okay, uh, last example. We've got um, random variable x distributed normally. Mu and, and sigma, in this case, we don't know either of them. However, we have two bits of information to compensate. All right, we've got two bits of information here. Whereas in this previous example, we knew one. We knew one of them. But we only had one piece of information in order to find the other one. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's what you can expect as a setup. Uh, if you're given one, this is an easier example. You can get straight into it. Um, but we've got a little bit more work to do here. Uh, but as ever, if we've got two unknowns, we need two equations. And we can set those two equations up from these two pieces of information here. So let's get to work. We have a bell curve. We have an unknown mean. And we have an unknown standard deviation. What we do know is that two lies such that 0.546 of the scores lie below it. So that's going to be 0.546 is in here somewhere. So I'm going to put my 2 here. And 3 lies such that 0.743. So I think that's still less, still within one standard deviation. So I'm going to put 3 about here. Uh, 0.743 to the left of 3. Okay. So what are we going to do with those bits of information? Okay, well, just like we did in the previous question, it's this area of 0.546 here that we're going to use, and we're going to find the Z score for each of our values of 2 and 3. So I want to know what my Z score here is. I want to know what Z is here, and I want to know what Z is for 3. And I'm going to get them by going in and finding out for 0.546, what my Z score, for my standardized score for 2 would be. 0.546. Let's go to it. 0.546. So in we go. Menu. 553. 0.546. Leave my mean and standard deviation as they are. And bingo. 0.115562. 0 0.11, get rid of that, 5, 6, 2. That's my Z score for 2. All right, I need a Z score for 3. I just need a little bit more room. Um, oh, I rubbed something out there, didn't I? That's, that was a mu in there. Okay, so uh, what is it for 3? Well, 0 0.743 is my, my area, 0 0.743, so menu. 553, 
0.743. That's all done. Let's click for Z score. 0 0.652622. 622. What do they tell me? That's 0.115 of a standard deviation above the mean. Right. This, this one here is 0 0.652 of a standard deviation above the mean. Brilliant. Okay. So let's form some equations now from that information. So uh, let's go with this one. From this, I can say that 2 minus mu, 2 minus mu over standard deviation, I don't know, has to equal this value here, 0 0.115. Five six two. All right. What does this one tell me? That three minus mu over the standard deviation has to equal zero point six five two six double two. Why is that? Because they are equivalent. All right. I found my z scores. My z scores. Remember, just they they move my uh, my normal distribution to a standardized one. They help me find unknown means and standard deviations by giving me an equivalent by giving me an equivalent score so i i can standardize my scores by taking my mean subtracting the sorry i've taken my score subtracting the mean dividing by the standard deviation that's going to have to equal the standardized score so i've got two equations look at that i've got two equations in two unknowns away i go I'm, this is familiar territory for us so I'll just pause while I do this. Actually, I've unpaused because I think you're going to do this a few times and I want you to be familiar with the process. So it's fairly straightforward, but I think there's a there's a, a way to do this so that, that you make life easy for yourself. All right, finding um, it's pretty straightforward to make mu the subject of both equations and then we'll uh, Solve by substitution. So mu here is equal to 2 minus 0 0.115562 sigma. Go over this side, we get 3 minus mu equals 0 0.652, etc. So mu is equal to 3 minus 0 0.6526 double 2. Um, Sorry, that's, there was a sigma on the end of that. There we are. So now what we can say is therefore 2 minus 0 0.115562 sigma, that's going to be equal to 3 minus 0 0.652622 sigma. We gather our sigmas on one side. So I'm going to take negative 0 0.11, add this 0.65. And I'll see what I get. Okay, we're almost there. Um, so solving for sigma gets us uh, 1.86. You can you can test all that out. You'll get some. You'll get plenty of uh, practice. Now to find mu, we just need to we can put this value of sigma into either of our equations here. I'm going to go with uh, two minus. So therefore, mu is equal to two minus 0.115, etc times 1.86 etc I'm going to use the whole calculator display and that lo and behold is equal to 1.7823 significant figures and we have our mean and standard deviation okay this epic video lesson is over and I'll see you shortly